Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And this week I'm going to be making a zombie survivors camp for a fantasy setting. So the concept behind this week's build is something my mate Fabian's throwing together. You see, he throws a huge game of Zombicide every now and then, and he's decided to turn it into a campaign style of game. As a part of these new rules that he's developing, he's got a base system where you can unlock new NPCs that give you new abilities throughout the game. And as a part of this, we decided to build the base. I really like this idea of a developing home base, and I think it could work great across a lot of different tabletop games, such as Dungeons and Dragons. The idea behind this build will be an old ruin that's been cleaned up a little bit by its inhabitants to use as a safe house. In the future, me and Fabian are going to go through it, add all of the extra details and miniatures, and really zombie this up. To start, we're going to cut out the base piece of XPS foam. I use a long straight cut in about 10 different slices to get a nice clean edge. Next up, we're going to grab some foam board and remove the paper layer. Hopefully you've got some of the stuff that this is easy to remove, otherwise you're in for a bit of work. Now we're going to start by cutting out all of the base elements of a building. So we'll measure up and cut out a floor using a scalpel and then we're going to chop out some walls. As I go, I pin these in place to hold everything together and then get to chopping up the longer walls. Using some small metal pins again to hold these in place, I make sure that everything's going to fit together nice and square. Then cutting out the front doorway before again pinning everything together and verifying the position on the board. Now I can pull all this apart and start adding in some texture. Using these 3D printed texture rollers, I'm going to add some brick textures onto the foam. By pressing this down nice and hard and rolling it across, it will save me a lot of time from having to carve these out by hand. I then repeat this process over the entire floor section before moving on and cutting out some windows from a couple of the walls where I wanted to add a little bit of extra detail. After the base shape of the window was cut out, I then went around and carved some extra details around the edges of these to try and represent some larger stones. This will come out later on, but I do cover most of this in the end with little slices of cardboard. Next up, I gave everything a layer in a cheap black acrylic paint. This will help to seal up all of the foam and give me a nice base to paint over. And as I mentioned earlier, I cut out some cardboard to represent some extruding stone around the windows. This will help pop once I put down the black paint and dry brush the whole thing, rather than just the carvings in the foam. And speaking of, it's time to move on to the first grey dry brushing of the entire base. I'm using a Citadel acrylic paint for this and just going to town with an old makeup brush. And at this point, it's time to start gluing all of the walls to the floor and get this piece together. It's alright if you're a little bit messy with the hot glue at this point, since we're going to be covering most of the walls in a kind of a render to help represent what those old school buildings look like in a lot of that medieval fantasy. So once these were glued on, I realised I didn't want to build a door, so I decided that's where the building had fallen down and carved out a large section to really add that ruined edge. So now it's looking pretty good, it was time to make up a render. I used some white gesso, a little bit of cheap brown acrylic paint, and some white grout. This all mixed together quite nicely to make this kind of light tan brown render that really nicely represented what I wanted 
to look like that old school render on buildings that will dry nice and cracked and rough looking. I'll also leave some sections without any render to represent places that might have broken away and been repaired over time. Then carving a few extra obvious cracks around these big open broken areas before spreading the excess render over the XPS foam to start adding some texture to the courtyard. Next up I came in with a lighter grey on all of those details around the windows to really help them pop out. And then taking a terracotta red and painting all of the base areas of brick, especially around the edges of these larger destroyed areas. This is going to represent the actual building colour before any repairs were made due to the destruction over time. So this means anywhere else that there's going to be exposed brick that I don't want to have been repaired has to be painted with this same terracotta red. And now to represent the repairs to the building, I'm going to come in with a grey stone to really show that there is an obvious difference between the original brick colour and the new colours. Now we grab some granny grading. This stuff is great for fantasy windows. It's a cheap plastic mesh that you can get from most craft stores in the knitting section. I just chopped this down to size to match the windows that I've carved and then pressure fit to make sure that everything sits properly. And while looking at it, I realized that the top layer needed some more ruined edges. So I carved out a whole heap more foam and added that same brick texture before carving it up to look destroyed and hot gluing everything in place. I contemplated not using the pressure roller over this layer, but I loved the look of the brick pattern coming through on the render. And since I was working on a second floor, I decided to add the remnants of a second level to the building. So I cut some old wooden chopsticks down to size, carved out a few holes in the existing foam, and glued these guys into place with some hot glue. These would work perfectly as a base for the wooden floor of my second level. But we wanted them to look a little bit more destroyed. So we came in and hacked a little bit up and then re-glued them in place, adding a few more as I went along the back of the building to add the idea that there was previously an entire top floor that has since been destroyed and fallen over time. And now that that's in, I can get back to adding the remaining destroyed walls. I'm making sure to have a larger section on this higher balcony area for story purposes of the larger zombie side game that this is being built for. I also threw down a piece of cut up chopstick to represent the topper from this repaired area before moving on and starting to glue down a whole heap of coffee stir sticks. Doing these individually will take a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth it in the long run for any kind of wooden platform. These things scale down nicely, and when stained up later on with a little bit of a brown ink, they will look brilliant. And now to make these higher wall sections match the rest, I mixed up a little bit more of that render and started to apply it quite liberally over all of these sections. And now that we have that all blended in together nicely with a render, we're going to paint these sections of granny grating that are going to fill in the bars of the windows. With a little bit of glue on the edges, these are all pressure fitted into place and worked out beautifully. And now it's time for some cheap brown ink. This is essentially just brown acrylic paint and a little bit of water mixed in together. Once this is mixed up nice and thoroughly, I just start to apply it all over the model. This is going to be used to stain these wooden planks, so apply as much as you feel is necessary to get the level of darkness that you like, and then start applying it all over the render. This is going to make the whole thing look a lot darker and dirtier, 
and help blend everything together nicely. If you feel like you've put a little bit too much on at any given point, just wipe the excess away with a paper towel. This is the advantage of having it so heavily watered down. And because of this, it's a nice cheap wash to apply to an entire model, especially a large terrain piece like this. And while that was drying off, I printed off some stone walls that are available for free on Thingiverse. A little bit easier than carving them from foam. I hit these all with a grey primer quickly from above just to give them a zenithal style highlight and this was enough for my purposes. Now it was time to see how everything looked together and I could tell that the courtyard needed a tree. So I grabbed out some pipe cleaners and used the encounter terrain method to make myself a nice creepy tree. I've done this in a few other videos where I've gone into further detail but essentially you just twist up the pipe cleaners into the shape you like and then use a lighter or some other type of raw flame to melt back all of the fuzzy bits. This ends up leaving you with a really nice texture that becomes a creepy kind of twirled up twisted tree. That also has the capability of being bent into shape and wrapped around this wall like it's growing over the entire area. Now I'm going to cover the entire thing with a fairly thick layer of a cheap brown acrylic paint. I tried to spray paint this stuff in the past, but it just soaks in and doesn't color it too well. I'm also going to take this time to use the same brown over the entire courtyard area to give us a nice earthy base. Then coming in and dabbing the whole thing down to remove any brush strokes. And once that's had time to dry, it's time for a dry fit of all of the pieces. Once everything's down, I'm really loving the way that this looks, but I decided we needed to add a little bit of light. So I picked a position for this area of a fireplace and I marked it out by puncturing a hole. Now that I had that hole as a reference, I used the longer poker attachment on my hot wire cutter to continue it through to the other side. Then using this to make a reference and cut out the shape of a cheap LED candle. Now that this fit in nice and snug, it gave us a beautiful little flickering orange light. I then glued down a piece of cardboard over top of this to hide all of the exposed area that I accidentally cut out and used some hot glue to hold everything in place. I'll come back and fix that up later on, but for now we're going to use the hot glue gun to stick everything else down as well. So we're going to start with the house. Make sure that this is lined up nice and parallel which I did not and ultimately drives me crazy. So learn from my mistakes. Next up, it's time to glue down all of the walls. I'm doing this now before doing the final layer of basing terrain as I want the dirt to really push up against the edges and help to blend these into the environment. And then throwing down a little veranda area at the front made of the same coffee stir sticks that I used inside the building. Now it's time to fix up that cover up position. We're going to use some of that same basic cheap brown acrylic to make it match the surrounding areas. But then we're going to start spreading a little bit of this basing dirt over the wet paint to help it just dry in with that little bit of extra texture. And to make sure that's nice and solid, we're going to soak it with watered down PVA glue. We're then gonna spread this over the rest of the model's base and add a lot more of that same matching dirt texture. I just grabbed this by scooping some dirt out from the yard and mixing it in through something like this small sieve. I'm gonna go around all of the exterior base areas giving them a good soak in this watered down glue and then coating them with this sieved out dirt. Then soaking that again in the watered down glue to really just hold everything in place nice and solid. 
Next up, I started using more of the glue to add some more torn up and old messy kind of effects by putting bits of glue and thus dirt into any of these smaller areas. Like over time, they've gotten caught or blown in with the wind. I then added a much thicker bead around all of the edges of the walls and coated these while also mixing a little bit of dusted dirt into the crevices of most of the walls. Using a spray of isopropyl alcohol and then the watered down glue to hold everything in place. So now it was time to add the tree. First up I gave him a dry brush in a towel light okra. I love how this stuff dries and looks for a wooden effect and it really helps to bring out the creepy bark of these twisted pipe cleaner trees. And then with the dry fit, he still fits perfectly on that wall. So we'll grab the hot glue gun and coat the base of the trunk and stick him in place. Coming in again with the hot glue gun to really just hold all of these roots down where they're intended to be. Now to help blend this in place, we're going to surround all of these roots with some of this PVA glue and then give it a nice thick dousing in that same dirt. I then brushed a little bit of the excess off some of the roots before giving it a soak in isopropyl alcohol and coating anywhere that the glue shows through with a little bit of extra brown. Then I took the opportunity while this was drying to add a nice black border to the edges of the build. Next up we're going to start adding some greenery. In the game Zombicide there are a lot of hedges, so we're going to use some sponges like this to make ourselves a little bit of hedge edging around these walls. Once we've cut them down to size, we will cut out a bit of a pattern to make it look a bit more like a natural growth. Over time, these things have been worn and torn with zombie invasion and grown back a little bit. And now that we have a good base, it's time to bush them up. So I'm gonna make a little pile of flock like this and coat the bases with a spray of quick grip. This stuff will dry nice and tacky and can then be dunked into the flock causing it to stick and look like a nice and natural hedge. And once these were dry I gave them a quick soak in isopropyl alcohol and a spray with that watered down PVA glue to just help hold everything in place and keep it from falling apart all over the board when in play. Once that was dry it was time to hit them with the hot glue gun and put them in place. And beautiful. The first bit of greenery definitely makes a difference. So I stuck a few to the back of the building as well to help fill in this gap. And in this back area was a perfect place to start experimenting with adding extra moss and overgrowth of the hedges. So we started spreading out a heap of glue into random areas up and around where the existing hedges are and just piling a heap of flock in there. And I liked it. So I continued this over the front of the build, doing the same to the front hedges and helping them to feel a bit more grown into the environment. And now that the hedges looked amazing, it was time to move on to the fire pit. It looked pretty cool with the oven on top, which will end up in the final piece, but it won't be there all the time. So I wanted to figure out a way to make this look cool without that there. So to begin, I glued this candle in underneath so it would stay in the same position and be much easier for us to switch on and off knowing how the button would move. I then started to glue down a heap of little rocks around the edge, deciding to make this a fireplace and creating a little flame out of hot glue. I did this by drying out some little strands of hot glue separately and then just sticking them down on top of an existing pile of glue. Then using a little bit of extra glue to fill in the gap and pull this up towards the top. Once this was dry, I hit it all with a generous chunk of yellow ink. This allowed it to stay nice and see-through 
but still let the orange glow flame through. After seeing the finished result, I wish I'd made like six of these on this build. But it's time to move on and start adding a whole lot of overgrowth to the rest of the old destroyed building. So with a few layers and vines of PVA glue beating its way through the walls, I just coat everything with a generous layer of different kinds of flocks. Using different kinds of flocks gives me a nice bit of natural variation and helps our eyes from just thinking, oh, this is one big blotch of green. And as always, I like to go over the top with my plants and overgrowth. So I'm even gonna have these guys snaking their way up and growing into these window frames. Now to help tell the story of the survivors that are taking this camp back in the apocalypse, I decided to glue down a few extra different types of rocks to help fill in the broken away pieces of wall to make it seem like the current survivors have tried to rebuild these sections and keep their area as safe as possible. Then spreading some extra rock and varying dirt around the area to remind us that this has fallen apart in the past. And now for the final details of some grass tufts and flowers. I love adding all of this onto a build because I really think it helps it pop and adds that real natural variation that we see in real life. So I'm going to throw a heap of tufts randomly around the place, some of them growing into the sides of these rock and walls. And then anywhere else I feel like plants and seeds would have gotten caught by the wind. So all around these roots and anywhere that there are large stones. Then it's time to move on to the flowers. I decided to take each corner of the build and give it its own color. This will make more sense when we use it for its final result and each one of these corners will end up with its own kind of NPC. So each area will represent a different upgrade for the players. And now it's time for even more details. You guys know that I love my tiny little mushrooms and adding that extra element of tiny 3D printed life. So we're gonna add a handful of these miniature mushrooms, a couple of little frogs, and a few other little printed bits and pieces. And now there's not much protection without a front gate. So I measured out the distance between these two pillars and cut out a piece of foam to fit. I then just carved in a wood texture with a scalpel and gave a bit more of a wooden grain by scraping a metal brush across the foam. It's starting to look all right but I decided to cut it into two pieces and put a wooden barricade on the back. Then basing it in that same cheap brown acrylic paint we've used for the rest of the build before letting it dry and dry brushing it with a towel light okra. And with that, calling the build done. There will be a future video once I've had a chance to collaborate with Fabian on his final version of the rules where we go through and really make this thing look like it's part of a fantasy apocalypse. But for now, we've got a nice cleaned up ruin that will work beautifully to serve us as a sort of home base for any kind of tabletop RPG. And for those who have stuck around, I thank you. This is the longest video that I've made yet and it showed a lot of different little tips and tricks and methods that I use throughout a lot of my larger builds. I hope you guys have enjoyed this build for a Zombicide Legacy style campaign. 